So for some patients, the tools, the required decompression cannot be achieved using standard tools. And that's really what we're always saying. We're always constantly alternating between drills, if you will, and drills, and of course, kerosens. So the problem with the drill is it requires a straight line of sight. So what do we do? We drill more kerosene, curve kerosens, so on and so forth. But by the time we're done, oftentimes we've removed a lot of the functional bone, the bone that's in the facet joint, for example, or we've retracted on the nerve roots too much. So by using curved devices that can reach around corners and go again into the foramina without having to come down straight and resect the entire facet joint, that allows us to preserve the key structures. That's where the curved design of the Dereal uh, Tools platform is very helpful to pick the right tool so you can spare the functional joint and ligament and muscular ligaments and bone complex, but also protect the nerves as well, but all the while essentially decompressing along the nerve, if you will, not having to constantly unroof the nerve, which leads to a lot of our structural stability long-term issues, as you know, even from a minimally invasive tubular approach, where we've always traditionally had problems with the line of sight of the ipsilateral facet complex, as you can see. And so that's really what it is right there. And that's why you can see in a big facet joint, we have to resect a lot of the facets just to even get to the external dorsal root ganglia of the nerve. But with a curved device, we can literally run it almost all the way out slowly but surely. And you can even use fluoroscopy image guides to confirm that you're out that foramen. But the bottom line is once we're, we're now running effectively along the nerve all the way out here, as you can see, and cutting only the bone we need to, to ensure that the nerve root's free, because that's why we're there in the first place, to free the nerve root, not to resect the facet joint, especially in a lot of our decompression only patients, if you will. So that's what this slide is really meant to do. This study is done. So, okay, you, you, Dr. Koo, Larry, you're saying you can preserve the facet joint, prove it to me. Well, here we'll find that there's a 600, in a study that was done, we showed that with five uh, levels were operated by three skilled surgeons, and we compared the CT of using standard tools, drills, and rondures versus the curved to real drill, just like I was just showing. We, on average, achieved a 163% higher increase using the real drill, and the pars width, which is the risk of the pars fracture being created, the remaining laminar pars bone that is left and not and still available is there's 24% or one quarter less reduction using the drill drill. So as much, if not more, foramen decompression across the length of the foramen while still sparing that biomechanically important bone of the pars so we don't cause an iatrogenic pars fracture here and therefore induce potentially delayed spondylolisthesis fractures or pars defects in the, in the days to come, which of course is the thing we're trying to do because we're trying to reduce that 10 to 15% incidence of delayed coronal tilt or instability or listhesis that's often seen in older people after wide lumbar laminectomy, which is the reason many of us have to fuse those patients at that time or down the line. 